Okay, this is the unboxing of the new Precision Pro Z head. Uh, this has got the Yeti branded spindle in it. It moves up to a one kilowatt from, uh, I'm, I'm coming from an 800 watt unit. Uh, I'll keep both spindles. So the white box had the spindle. This is the dust chute cover. And this is the Z head itself. Okay, so this is the new Z head. This is the precision head, not the precision pro. So this still just has the one ball screw. The precision pro has an additional ball screw here. Uh, this is the one made for the, uh, the Yeti branded one kilowatt spindle. Okay, on this head, I can still take the A and B spindle, drop it in, and I'm good to go, and tighten it up here on the side the way the new head is designed. So I can use either the, the Yeti 1 kilowatt spindle or the A and B 800. Okay, and here is the new Yeti 1 kilowatt spindle. I'm assuming it will probably go in this way because there is a bit of a cutout here. Let me cover that. I'm guessing it would drop right in this way. Plug in. And this has a data cable as well. Uh, this spindle can be controlled through the software. So whatever I program in the software, I can't do this with one hand, but that, that would pop on here. And this other end will plug in here. It's basically a USB mail here. And this is a multi multi-pin receiver here. Uh, so rather than do it by one hand, I'm just going to put it on the right way. What else is in the box? Uh, it is a precision collet, which means it's got a multi-split face. It's better balanced than the normal collets. I've not found a problem with the other collets. The regular collets have just had uh, four splits um, that I used on the 800 watt. I found that to be fine. But this is what they call a precision collet, an ER-16. And it uses a special collet wrench. We need this to grab onto the end of the collet nut. Um, these are available on the Yeti website. Let's get it to focus. Come on. There it is. Um, this will come with the unit, but if you misplace this, you can't make your collet changes. So you want to make sure you have an extra one of these at least put away somewhere. Okay, so here's the two Z heads side by side. This is the new one. This is the 1.2 Precision. So it's made for the Yeti 1 kilowatt spindle. And this is the A and B one that, well, that I've had and, and have loved. Um, so on this one, we, we adjusted the concentric rings to do the spindle change. Uh, a tool change to pull the spindle out here through the front. Now we're going to do it through here. We have a lot more air flow here, is my guess. That's why they changed this, to have more air coming in to get better evacuation out of the back dust chute. Um, the front dust cover also is a little different. This is the new one. So it's got air gap, air slots coming through. Again, I think to bring more air in to it to get better evacuation of chips. The prior ones did not. They were just a solid piece. Uh, this has got a quick plug up at the top to plug the power in. The other one was hardwired into the back of the unit for the A and B spindle. Uh, and again, we're still selling the A and B spindle. That's our base unit. It's our standard unit. Uh, but some people wanted a more, little more power but didn't want to go to the 220. And this way we, we're, we've contracted to have this spindle made for us with our name on it. So a little difference in, the, in the, the way they look up top. But again, the A and B spindle does fit in this Z head. I've got to find out what we've got to do about connections, but that shouldn't be a big issue. Uh, after that, to swap out and put this head on, move it out of the way. Uh, I've disconnected the screw, thumb screw here and pulled this chain out. So I've done it here too, just disconnected it, pulled it down, and just while pushing down on the uh, 
piece, just back back the whole the whole thing all the way out. Lay them down flat, and then we're going to pull this Z head off. Um, it's unplugged from system power for sure, and it's just good to go. It'll come right off, and then we'll put the other one back on. I'll have to adjust the wheels, so I'll put the wheels in and follow the adjusting wheel set. You have uh, your that's just a bent wrench uh, and a two and a half millimeter hex key. So with these, you can you can adjust the wheels, lock the nut with the uh, the router wrench, open it up with this, rotate it around. It's a concentric again. It's an offset cam basically on the wheel. So as you rotate it around, it'll push more to one way or the other way, and you've got four or so multiple wheels to adjust to make tight. I just slid this on without the camera, and I don't think I'm going to adjust it. So this, this head was not necessarily adjusted with this upper beam, uh, but when I put it on, I could feel the wheels, the first set of wheels kind of pop as they went on. I slide it in. Again, I'm holding the camera with one hand. It's difficult to do. As I went into the second one, they popped, but it feels pretty good, and when I get to the third one, that's good and solid. There's no... I've got the... Okay, I've got the beam raised up all the way, just holding it with the cam clamp. So if I dropped it down onto the table, it'd be more, but I don't feel any slop as I'm twisting it and trying to rotate it. There's no swap or ability to torque it to have wheel slop in the wheels underneath here. So I'm just going to leave it like this, and I'll cut with it see what I think. If I feel like I'm not getting the accuracy of cut that I want and repeatability, all I have to do is send it down to the table, drill a hole, come back, go back and forth, race up and down a few times and send it back until I drill a hole again. And if I'm cutting new wood, I've got a problem if, it's, if I'm telling it directly to the same hole. So I'll see how this sets up, but I think it's going to be fine. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So uh, not much to adjust. But again, there are videos on how to adjust it. Now, I also want to make sure that you guys are cleaning out your tracks. If you look at this track, uh, there's some debris in it. So I'm just using my finger and cleaning it. But I mean, you can see I was cutting some butcher block material. Um, and you want to make sure that that's clean and wiped out periodically. I keep a long bristled brush and, and I use the exhaust of my shop vac to kind of blow things off sometimes while I'm cutting. Okay, so that went on both sides. Uh, my old fittings, there apparently is a different size. It came with its own uh, screw, thumb screw. And it's a little different, a little smaller than what I had on my previous now that doesn't make sense because I'm yeah it is because it's a different base plate so you need to use the right one that's why it wouldn't go in and thread itself properly before so I've got the two old ones that I'll just throw in my gear bag and uh, there's no slop in that Again, the whole thing's rocking because I've got it up above the table, just held with the cam clamps. But there's, as I wiggle it and jiggle it, there's no slopping, there's no slopper movement in the Z head to the X beam. And again, the X beam is not being secured properly because I'm not cutting material, I'm not, I don't have it clamped down. Uh, so that's it. I'm good to go. Okay, so I'm letting it boot up. Um, typical. I haven't changed anything on the console. I'll enable auto square, get my tools out of the way. And you have to press the home button again so it finishes it, finishes the sequence and tells it to move. So the hookup was really just coming to the power on both sides, here and here connecting and screwing them in. Speed control here, plugged into the USB port here. And the main power now is a short cable from here. The previous version had it hardwired in down here and up. So it's gonna do the auto square, which will be banging it against the stops to square it. It'll bring it back down to the end of the console. And I'll just kick the spindle on, off and on. And I have tightened it here, yeah, a little bit. I've got it. Pulled all the way up to six so that if I give it full speed in the software, it will allow it to be full speed here. I really don't want it to run at high, high speed though here. 
Now we're taking it out through here. So I'll loosen it here. I'll take out both the power wires at the top here and here. Well, to be simple, I think it's easier probably to take it out here. I'll ask the, the plant which way they want us to do it. And pull this down. Okay, this is a, I'm merging some video in after the unboxing, which I had filmed weeks ago. Uh, the reason I prefer to undo the data cable here at the top of the spindle is that you'll see I was cutting some padock and um, uh, some of the, the, ref the debris floated. Uh, so the dust collection didn't get it. I've got, I've got some there and I've got some here, but if I'm going to be plugging and unplugging here and using the USB connection to unplug it, there's a likelihood that I'm going to put uh, debris back into the into the controls. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to instead unplug here at the top. Now one thing at the top, uh, don't just drop this on. And what I would do is I'd use a, a marked a silver Sharpie. I just have to find mine uh, to mark which end of it lines up with the face of it as I'm facing it from the console area. But when you put that down, don't just drop it. Use that lock ring on it as well. Um, I was cutting earlier and I didn't have it locked, just wasn't using the lock function, and it popped off. Well, when it popped off, it, it didn't know what to do, so it sent an alarm through the system and things like that. So drop it down, lock it on. There's no debris getting in there. It's nice and clean. So give it a quick you know, blow off before you pull it off, wipe it down, whatever, uh, pop it up, and then you're better protected. So that's how I would definitely do that. I like that better. And having now run this console uh, with the console feedback from the Yeti, SC1 uh, 1 kilowatt branded spindle. I do like it a lot. Uh, having been, being able to control and know your feedback that whether you're pushing the spindle too hard or and seeing that all on the console is, is great. It, especially as a new user, you're going to be trying trying new bits and new a new machine, um, different cutting techniques and different materials. So this makes a lot of sense. Um, I still, I mean, the, the A and B spindle, that was a great spindle. We did a lot of work with it, but it didn't have the software control be, in able, being able to come back and give us feedback at the console. So this is a really nice setup. Um, there's a difference in price, though, so there's, there's certainly no, no reason not to go with that. That, that spindle and console and headset, that works, that works well. So now we'll have this updated uh, Z-head so that you can use either spindle in it, but we can still use the A and B 800 watt spindle if you, if you want to. So we still offer that as our standard base model. This is the precision model with the upgraded uh, to, to one kilowatt spindle that, that gives feedback on the console. Um, and then we have a precision pro, which will add the additional balls or lead screw uh, here at the, at the Z head and a laser XY data uh, datum point locator. So, um, that's the unboxing of the new Z-Head. So I hope that helps you and answers any questions you have. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call Eric Schiller, 205-871-6618. Or go to the YetiSmartBench.com website and fill out the contact page, and I'll get back with you just as soon as I can. Thanks.